Assalamu alaikum. My name is Um Ali. Welcome to Um Ali's Happy Home. Here we talk about homeschool stuff sometimes, <laughs> as well as knitting, crocheting, and I am recently adding in some sewing since I am a bit of a bit better <laughs> for sewing at sewing, um, and I've sewed a lot more garments, and I will continue to be sewing. So I figured that might be kind of a nice addition to the knitting and crocheting. I find that a lot of people who kind of knit and crochet also enjoy sewing as well. So I thought that I'd start that off by sharing my handmade abaya collection. So now if you are not familiar with what an abaya is, it's a bit more popular in the Muslim community, although it's relevant in you know other communities as well, religious wise, but it does tend to be a more Asian, you know, Middle Eastern type garment. And it's pretty much just an oversized dress. It is a dress that does not form to the body. Although you will see dresses that are called abayas <laughs> that are very form fitting. They shape the waist, they have tighter arms, things like that. Those are not technically abayas. Um, abayas should not conform to your body. They should not show your shape. In fact, they're kind of meant to hide your shape a bit more. And um, so you will find it just a bit more in the Muslim community, especially with those who choose to veil themselves, whether it be just the hijab or the face veil, the niqab. So anyways, I personally started making my own niqabs just out of the desire to want to have a certain type. Did I say niqab? I started making my own abayas. I think I did say abaya. <laughs> Um, out of the desire to want to have a certain type of abaya, but unfortunately the fabric of the abaya, the style of the abaya that I personally like tend to be very expensive. Upwards towards the 200 to 500 dollar realm and I just, you know, like many people, I do not have that kind of money to spend on a singular garment. So I kind of took it into my own hands and started designing my own abayas. A lot of abayas have kind of gotten into the trend of being synthetic. Not that that's a bad thing. I have tons of abayas that I absolutely love from different Muslim companies that are synthetic. They drape beautifully. They're very comfortable. But for the most part, most of them do not breathe very well. So they can be very uncomfortable to wear in hot climates, in particular hot and humid climates. Some do breathe better than others. I've noticed certain companies' fabrics, um, they do have a little bit more air that's able to come through, but a lot of them don't. And I do live in a hot and a humid climate, and I personally absolutely love the way that linen feels on the body. Plus, it's just super easy to work with because it does tend to be a little bit thicker, so it's not stretchy, it's not thin, um, you know, it's really easy to cut and make patterns out of. Um, it's easy to do different styles with, and um, and it comes in, you know, an all assortment of thickness, thinness, quality, pattern, color. Um, so yeah, so I absolutely just, I love the way an abaya that is made out of linen feels on my skin, on my body. So I started making my own abayas, and it kind of started out as this hope that I was actually going to manufacture a collection of abayas. And this is a big reason why, not that I kept them secret, but I kept them kind of hidden away to an extent. Um, but unfortunately, as business goes, there's a lot of things that you don't expect when you're starting a business. And one of those in my cases was the expense of, the expense of manufacturing as well as creating patterns and things like this. Um, it was just really challenging. It can be challenging to source a manufacturer that not only supplies the fabric that you want, but makes the quality that you want at the cost that you want so that you can still be hitting profit margins. Um, and to be able to pr produce a smaller quantity can be really challenging. Um, I found many manufacturers that would produce my garments with the fabric that I wanted, but they wanted really high um, production quantities, and it just wasn't feasible for me personally. So unfortunately, they've just kind of gotten left in my closet for my own pleasure, which is absolutely fine. I've attempted to kind of thought process through, well, maybe I can hand make these abides, I can make the sample, 
and make them to order for sisters. Unfortunately, that also didn't really go in my favor as well because the, the cost of the fabric, I use very high quality linens, which can be very pricey. And then on top of that, I am a mother of four, alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah. I do homeschool and I take care of the home pretty much by myself. So because of that, the start of purchase to the end of the product can take me quite a bit of time. And because of that, I would have to charge a little bit more for the abaya than I would really feel comfortable doing, like morally, <laughs> ethically. And I know that your time is worth money and the quality of the garment speaks miles, but at the same time, I have just learned being in retail, having a business for the past seven years or so, alhamdulillah, that people don't exactly want really expensive. People want affordable. And, um, you know, so yes, maybe I'd get a customer here and there, um, you know, but again, it, you know, it's just kind of one of those that it just never really went the way that I had planned. So there has been a few things that I have been thinking. Um, one was recommended to me by a girlfriend of mine that maybe I make patterns and sell those patterns. Um, and then of course, referral will be fabric that I use and things like that. If somebody wants to make the same exact one as I do, um, that is kind of an idea. I am really actually thinking a lot about that um, because then you could buy the pattern for way cheaper and then, you know, you would just supply your own fabric and your own time and your own skills to make it. So we will see where that goes. But today I am going to show you this Abaya collection. Um, at first I was going to try everything on for you, but honestly, I just feel like that's going to be a big headache for me to have to do that because I would feel like to give the Abaya justice, I would then have to like match my scarf and match my niqab and like, I don't really want to like show myself off. That's not what I'm <laughs> really here for. So I am just going to use my lovely mannequin form. So now because of this, I'm actually <laughs> on the floor right now. I'm not standing up. Um, because of this, you will only see, you know, what you are seeing. I will like, you know, if there is detail on the bottom, I will pull it up a little bit so that you can see that detail or something. I'm also hoping that my voice is able to project in the room because I will be standing a few feet away from the camera. So we're going to see how this goes. Inshallah, all is well. I was going to be a bit more cinematic and you know, just have it on the mannequin form and like zoom over and I don't know, but I thought it might be nice for me to actually like talk about the Abaya and not just like present it to you. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now I didn't know if I should stand up and then my head would be cut off. I didn't know if I should just stay on the floor and be uncomfortable. So I pulled up my little desk chair. <laughs> so let's see if this works out fine. Hopefully you guys don't mind. So this is my most recent abaya that I have not finished in two years. I had this idea in mind. I'm usually really inspired by the fabric, not so much that I design and then find fabric. I like to see the fabric and then from there the design is usually inspired. Um, at the time I was thinking maybe I could make something for aid. Maybe I can make something that is like a very casual bridal abaya. I've actually been contacted by quite a few sisters who asked me if I could make bridal abayas. I always just kind of assume that people want their weddings to be like super fancy and things. So I never wanted the responsibility of making somebody's bridal gown. But that is kind of what was in mind for this. So it's kind of like a really nice Eid Abaya slash casual bridal Abaya. So you're not, I'm not going to be able to like zoom in and out. I might at the end of all of this kind of try and do some close ups of maybe them laying on the floor or something like that. So you can see some details and then maybe I can kind of just like pop them in here. I've never added videos like in the video, so maybe I can see if I can do that like while I'm chatting this way. This isn't like a waste of time. You're actually like seeing something else. So anyways, so this is a beautiful um, high quality cream linen um, and you have a pocket here 
that has the floral lace overlay on the pocket. And then you have this beautiful, just kind of floral pattern here, just on this side of the body. The sleeves are more of a bat wing style sleeve, just because I thought that it would drape a little bit more beautifully for this type of look. And then you have a um, beautiful kind of roped, laced, silk sort of detail that outlines uh, most all of this. It has it on the pocket and it has it on here as well. There's nothing different about the bottom. It really is just kind of like party on this side, a little bit simple on this side with just kind of that nice little pop. I started getting frustrated with this abaya because I brought the lace up a little bit too high on the neckline and I was a little bit unsure about how I was going to finish the neckline and then, you know, life happens and so it's just been a bit challenging for me to finish it, but really all I have to do is do the neckline, seam the sides together, um, you know, hem the bottom, hem the, hem the cuffs, and then um, this one will be done. So the back is just simple, so there's no lace on the back or anything like that. So I absolutely love this pattern. I don't know, maybe I'll force myself to finish it for, for it to be my Eid Abaya this year. Inshallah, we'll see. All right, so this next abaya is going to be much different than the first one. <laughs> I made this abaya almost five years ago, and um, it has turned into my at-home abaya. So I actually have a bamboo strapless dress that I designed and tie-dyed, and it is this same tie-dye pattern here. This is actually my Woodstock um, I guess I could call it a colorway. It's not for yarn though. <laughs> it's for my scarf company, Scarves for Love. And um, I absolutely love Woodstock. It's one of my all time favorites. I believe it came from my first collection that I did back in 2016. I think, I think that's when I started my business. So anyways, so yes, I have a tie dye hijab company. I've just kind of been on a bit of a break this past year because of my pregnancy and stuff. So anyways, this was just, super fun for me. <laughs> I was just like trying to have a lot of fun here. I have some patchwork up here, patchwork here. Um, I've got a couple pockets here. I love the way that linen looks when it frays. So this is frayed. I have a heart here that I kind of sewed on. And these are some of the details that maybe I'll try and focus in on for you guys. Um, the front fabric is just a white and light blue stripe. And then you have the um, tie-dyed cuffs here, um, and then you have a heart on your sleeve because I tend to wear my heart on my sleeve, so I thought that was kind of cute. Again, I have like another little heart patchwork here. I've got a little bit of patchwork squares down here, and then the party is back here. <laughs> so this is the back of the abaya. This is my Woodstock um, color for the scarf that I did for my scarf collections and um, yeah it's just one of my favorites I just think it's absolutely gorgeous and so I knew that I wanted to make an abaya that had this tie-dye effect on it um, so you can see the whole back of the sleeve is tie-dyed tie -dyed. so the whole back of the abaya is tie-dyed so it's just those front two panels that have this striped fabric with all of the patchwork so I just love this so much and it's so comfortable. I just, yeah, I wear it around the house. So it does have a few little stains, like there's a little stain here and whatever, uh, but it definitely has gotten its wear and tear. <laughs> so yeah, so that is a buy in number two. All right, this is a buy in number three. So a lot more of the party is going down here, <laughs> but I'll show you guys, of course. So this again, all of my, I don't, I just won't keep saying this, but all of the abayas are made with premium linen. Um, I usually use medium weight linen. I just find that it gives the opaqueness that I need. It's not translucent, so you can't see through it. And it's not so heavy to where it's like uncomfortable um, or scratchy. Premium linen tends to be much softer than just like, I guess, a regular linen. Um, it does run much more expensive. Um, these tend to run anywhere from like $18 to $22 a yard. So it can be quite pricey, especially when you're using anywhere from, you know, three yards maybe for an Abaya. So anyhow, so this is 
It's just kind of a plain kind of taupey color on the tie up top. And then on the cuffs, you just have a little, you know, cuff detail of some tie dye. And then this one I did make with pockets. It's got pockets. <laughs> the pockets themselves are actually tie dyed as well. So down here, the bottom section of the abaya is tie dyed. And again, I kind of did that um, unraveled linen look and that pretty much happens in the wash. So um, if you are used to linen, it softens up a lot more once you wash it and um, and then it'll also unravel. So I did, um, I think it's called like a French hem on a lot of these to expose this area um, and yeah, and just have kind of that unraveled effect. And then it's just a nice clean neckline and then parted more party <laughs> is in the back here so we have the tie-dye back on the shoulders as well as on the arms and then the bottom portion just continues because it is in the round on the bottom so this is one of my favorite abayas i absolutely love this one this might have been i don't know if this was the first or second abaya that i made i can't remember but i really put a lot of time and effort I try to do my best to pay attention to detail and construction, and I really want the garments to look like those $500 abayas that I can't afford. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. So this is abaya number three. All right, this is abaya number four. So this one is made with a beautiful gray fabric. I really, really love gray. It's just one of my favorites, especially light gray. And I love how linen kind of has this natural heathered effect on their fabrics. So I just really love gray linen. So this one, um, the sleeves are actually connected. So there's no sleeve seam or anything like that. Um, and then there's no pockets or anything, but there is this really beautiful cuff here. Um, and it is just this really light kind of blue gray stripe um, with some neutrals and a little bit of a darker blue kind of going through. It's super comfortable. I'm gonna say this is one of my favorites as well. I honestly just think that all my abayas are my favorites because I made them and I designed them myself for myself. <laughs> so, so just ignore me if I keep saying that. So anyways, I kind of did the same effect as I did with the other baya where this is pretty much the same fabric that is on the cuff and then I did kind of that raw edge here with a French I don't know if it's called a French hem or a French connection, but what happens is um, when you, I believe I did that on this, when you fold it on the inside, it actually doesn't have like an exposed hem. So it looks really nice and clean because it's almost kind of like folded in like a zigzag sort of. Um, and that's just how I prefer to finish my garments. Like I said, I just want them to look as well made and professional as possible. I wasn't super happy with how the neckline turned out. I ended up making the neckline almost boat necked and I didn't mean to. Um, I just kind of ended up cutting a little bit too much fabric, not really realizing it. So I ended up kind of adding like these little sections of fabric, just kind of like these little like half circles of fabric on the shoulder just to like bring it in a little bit. Um, so it's not my favorite neckline, but considering I do cover, that's covered by a scarf. And it is just, um, I do have um, the same fabric that I used on the cuff and on the bottom is kind of uh, on here in like a folded hem, kind of like a binding sort of, I don't know how to describe that. Um, but it's just very simple. It's the same thing all the way around. I love this one though. It's just it's one of those where like it can be fancy but it can also be casual like you can like when i wear this i usually wear like my white chucks my converse sneakers so anyways so yeah so what is that number four yeah <laughs> all right so this is a buy i believe number six and so now i will admit this one is not worn very often and the reason is because i made the sleeves too short i did not mean to um i felt like I maybe just wasn't really paying attention as much as I was finishing the garment um, with the cuffs. So the cuffs are unique in that they have kind of this swirly wave pattern. You can see that here. So it kind of goes like an S or a backwards S. 
And so I cut the fabric like that, and you can't really go back <laughs> once you've done that. I couldn't really add fabric onto that. So unfortunately I cut it a little bit shorter than I wanted. Yeah, I wish I would have added maybe a bit more onto it because it does just, it comes up to about here. So it exposes probably a good, maybe four or five inches of my wrist. So then that means that when I wear it, I have to wear a long sleeve shirt underneath it, which I usually do do that anyways, because the sleeves on the abayas are very big, so they open up. So your arm goes up and the sleeve kind of goes up, but I don't like the way that it looks when the sleeve is popping out, because it's almost like, it's one of those where you feel like you have to match exactly, and I don't have a long sleeve shirt that's like exactly one of these colors. So I just don't personally like the way it looks, um, but I love the abaya. I think it's beautiful. Um, so it has this cotton fabric here that is embroidered with these beautiful light flowers. And I know you probably can't see it that well. Again, maybe it'll be a detail I'll try and zoom in on after I'm done. And then the bottom kind of has the same effect. So I wanted it to kind of like swirl. So it does kind of, it goes down and then it kind of swirls up. So this one was a little bit more labor intensive in that I had to make sure that all of my fa fabric lined up exactly because I had to line this with the linen on the inside. So this is just an overlay because this outer fabric is just a little bit translucent. So I needed it to be more opaque. So it really is just kind of like an outer, yeah, an outer fabric. So that was a bit tricky as well as just kind of following a squiggly line as you're sewing. If you're not careful, you can end up having a bit of puckering, which I did just have a little bit of puckering like here in the sleeve. And um, yeah, so, and the sleeves are a little bit thinner than I usually do on my abayas. I kind of like a bigger sleeve. Um, so yeah, I, I believe my mom has worn this before. I think my mom wore this when we went overseas or when she went to the masjid with me for Eid. I can't remember, but I do think my mom wore this and she's quite petite. So it seemed to work well for her um, as an abaya. <laughs> anyway, she does not wear oversized clothes. So anyways, this probably would be just a little bit more form fitting on me right now postpartum than I would like it to. So again, I just don't really find myself wearing it that much, but I really do love the design and the concept and the colors and things like that. All right, also too, I have not been um, showing you the abayas by like the first that I made to the last that I made, although I did unintentionally show you the most recent abaya that I've been working on. And I think just looking at the stack of abayas, I think the last abaya I'm going to show you is actually the first abaya that I ever made. But all of the ones in between, I have no idea which one I made before the other. So these are in a random order, aside from the first and the last, <laughs> which was still random unintentionally. <laughs> but So this one, I have unfortunately only worn this one once, which I think it is due to the fact that I never can figure out what color hijab goes best with it. The one time that I did wear it, it was to a female function for my masjid, and I did just end up wearing, um, like, it's almost white. It's like as white as you can get for a cream. And um, the fabric in here is white. So you have a gray here, this beautiful gray. I almost want to say I use the same gray that I might have in another abaya of mine. And then, um, so I did kind of this fun detail up here. I don't know if you can see it, but the tie-dye actually starts kind of here right above the, um, the shoulder blades here. So um, yeah, it kind of, the tie-dye actually forms over the shoulder, which I just think is such a beautiful touch. And then this is a little bit different than my other abayas in that it is a set-in sleeve. So the sleeve is set in so it is more shaped to the body like the construction of a t-shirt or something like that would be um, it's not like a flat rectangle rectangle style or it's not a bat wing um, so it is a set in sleeve style which is a little bit more time consuming you do have to be careful about where the shoulder lays and things like that so that it doesn't look weird um, but thankfully this one turned out really well so 
as you can see here, this is actually based on one of my tie-dye um, scarves, hijabs from my scarf collection. Again, it was from, I think, one of my first collections back in 2016, 2017 for Scarves for Love. It is called Girly Girl, and it's probably one of my most popular solids, if not the most popular solid. And I think it's just a lot of us love to have a pink you know <laughs> and it is a bit more of a solid in comparison to you know my more colorful stuff that i do so i went ahead and i did this beautiful color in just a white linen obviously and i did the same type of design that i tend to do with the tie-dyed scarves as well and um, the bottom there's nothing going on on the bottom it's just gray all the way down the cuff does have this nice little white trim detail in the center connecting the cuff with the body of the tie-dye. But when you turn it around, then you have the tie-dye on the back extending to the sleeves. So I just thought that was kind of a nice touch. But aside from that, again, it's just simple and all black. So really just kind of the pop of style just has to do kind of with this nice little shoulder detail and this nice little cuff detail. So. So yeah, I absolutely love this abaya. I wish I wore it just a little bit more often. All right, here is another abaya. Again, probably one I wish I wore more often. So now if you do follow me on my Scarves for Love account or some of my other profiles or when my business was mainly Chelsea the Label, which was supposed to be the clothing that I was producing, so Chelsea, my little one, is trying to get in if you hear some scratching at the door like a kitty cat. <laughs> so anyways, so Chelsea, the label was what I had converted Scarves for Love into. Um, it was my intention on trying to pretty much make a clothing business. I did manufacture one garment, which is the maxi dress abaya that I'm wearing now, but I manufactured it in black. And um, it sold really well, alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah, I only have a few left. I did have to buy a really large order <laughs> to get them manufactured, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's just, it's too much. So, anywho, so um, it does actually have my Chelsea label, <laughs> label in it. Um, so I had made this with the intention to, like I said at the beginning of the video, try to make a garment that I felt was easy enough for me to reproduce by hand myself and maybe do pre-orders, um, you know, maybe allow up to, you know, two or three sisters to purchase this abaya based on what they see in the sample and then I would hand make it for them on a certain time schedule. But um, I had just purchased this fabric at a local fabric store of mine so that it was easily accessible to me and i absolutely love the look i love this abaya it's just so cute um i wear it with my converse sneakers i think i think i wear everything with my converse sneakers um and i do tend to wear it with like an off-white hijab in niqab and um yeah it's just super fun uh it just has like a little pop of color it just it has this really nice femininity to it that i really enjoy and it's super comfort comfy so this linen i believe actually has a small percentage of spandex in it or elastin in it so that it just makes it a little bit stretchier than say like a linen which has like no stretch to it whatsoever um and it does make the garment feel just a little bit heavier though but it actually kind of has a little bit of this cooling effect as well because of that so yeah so it has this really cute kind of peachy gray cream stripe on the top again I did kind of that frayed linen look here and then the cuff actually has the white on the bottom so it just stripes through there's a little bit of cuff there and then the rest of the abaya is just the cream but it does have the bottom piece just on the front though it has this fabric as well on the back it is just cream here so there's no detail on the back of that but when you do turn it around, I do carry on the stripes on the back and then actually on the entire sleeve. So it's not just on that top half. And yeah, I really love how this one turned out. <laughs> like I said, I put my little Chelsea the label tag in it and everything like that. Um, but it just, it just turns out to where like the cost of the fabric and the amount of time it takes me to make these. Again, it just really wasn't realistic of me to produce these by hand so again um you know my thought 
you know, inspired kind of by a girlfriend of mine is maybe start making patterns. Um, Cause I do think that there is a large group of, um, you know, women who could benefit from, you know, these types of garments, these types of styles as well. I think that, I do think that my style of abayas are unique. Um, I've done a lot of searching for abayas um, and I do think that mine are different. And I think that there is kind of a niche for that. So anywho, I have one more abaya, no, two more abayas. And uh, one is just super cool. <laughs> and the other is the first abaya I ever made. Okay, so this is the second to last abaya. This is actually going a bit faster than I thought it was going to, but still a long video. This abaya is inspired by the desert. Um, so my husband is from overseas. So we do try to travel there every once in a while. I have only been overseas twice now. Um, but I knew the last trip that I made that I wanted to have an abaya to wear in the desert. So we tend to go to the desert, we ride camels and things like that, and live in like a Bedouin style, and it's just super cool, and it's really inspiring, and it's just so absolutely gorgeous. Um, I have some amazing pictures of me and the kids on these camels, and there's a bit of a sandstorm starting, and um, the camel, I guess the camel rider, the guy who had the camels, who took us on the ride through the desert, um, he offered to take my camera and just snap pictures. And I just ended up with these really, like, really awesome pictures. And I was wearing this abaya. And um, I just, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like it was so fitting. I, I love the way that it looks, although like I don't wear it around here, um, you know, but I definitely will wear it again when I go overseas again. So this is a beautiful burnt orange linen, again, more of a premium linen. Um, it is a medium weight though. Actually, you know what? This might be one where it's not, it's still, it's an organic linen, but I don't think it, it was considered like a premium. So. I think this one ran roughly maybe $14 a yard versus like the $22 a yard for some of the other ones that I have. But the cool thing about it is that I actually used this beautiful vintage denim hamong fabric that I believe I got from Thailand. I got this shipped in from Thailand um, and it's just so beautiful. It's indigo dyed and um, it just has these beautiful designs on it. It is a little bit thicker. It's a very thick denim. It's not like a soft, um, stretchy denim. It is like <laughs> full on thick denim, but it is just like so beautiful. And I had this vision of like these pom poms because it just feels like very Bedouin to me. Um, and at first I was a bit hesitant because I was like, this could either go really bad or it can just be amazing. And um, I remember telling my mom that I was thinking about adding like these pom-poms here. And I think she was one that was like, oh, are you sure? Like, isn't that gonna like look cheap or weird? Or I'm so glad that I followed through with it because I just think it gives it like this extra touch that I just really love. And um, so yeah, so it just has, it is more of a bat wing style abaya. So when you wear it, it does kind of have this draping here under the arm which i just really love and um, really that's the detail that is the the umph of this abaya is that vintage hamong and the pom-poms i think it's absolutely beautiful i can't wait to wear it again all right and last but not least this is the very first abaya i ever made so this was me learning experimenting trying to have fun um, and trying to make something that i felt would be somewhat wearable um, this was inspired um, for an Eid that I celebrated overseas. It was the first time I had been overseas and I celebrated Eid al-Fitr there. So I knew that I wanted to have a nice abaya that I could wear on that particular day, wear to the masjid and things like that. So I also ended up wearing it to a wedding while I was there as well. So I wore it on Eid al-Fitr as well as I wore it at, at a wedding. So. This abaya is a beautiful kind of sky blue, robin's egg blue, however you want to describe that. Um, it's a medium weight. I don't think that this one was premium. I do think it was their standard organic linen. Runs probably about like $12 or $13 a yard. 
and I wanted to add kind of this cute little lace detail. So I had purchased this cotton lace on Etsy and it was originally just kind of like a creamy color and I just didn't feel, I feel sometimes cream on lace can look a bit cheap. So I ended up dyeing it with tea. So I just put some tea bags in a hot pot and I just stuck the lace in there <laughs> and that's what it turned out. And I just think that it's so beautiful. I really love how kind of this, I don't know, it's kind of more of a taupey color now, looks on top of the cream lining and um, the blue. This lining here is actually kind of more of a piping. So there's um, a cotton rope that's actually inside it. And then I wrapped the fabric around it so that it was more textured. So it's actually kind of like a, yeah, a roped looking detail. It's a little bit more chunkier. The bottom just has a, a cream hem on it. And then the neckline also has this kind of wrapped linen rope look. And the back is just plain. It's just the blue. Um, but I will say I do think the arms are just a little bit short. I think they're short by maybe about two inches. So I do have to make sure to wear a, sh a shirt underneath there. But because not too much of the shirt shows, I don't mind it as much with this one. But um, also too, the sides do have a little bit of a slit. So I do have to make sure to have like some high socks on and some pants and everything like that, even though I, I do tend to wear pants underneath all my dresses and stuff anyways. But yeah, this is the very first abaya that I ever made. I definitely learned tons of lessons, but it inspired me to make more. So guys, that is my handmade abaya collection. I hope that you enjoyed. And please, if you would like me to make patterns of these, please let me know. I feel like I need a little bit of motivation and you know, knowing that like I'd be putting all that time into doing something for a reason. Um, I love the Abaya collection, but you know, they're, they're my design. So like, of course I love them. I'm going to continue making them. I actually have enough fabric, I think to make three or four, um, that I was planning on making years ago, just never got to, I have been very inspired to sew lately. So I'm hoping that maybe this year is going to be kind of like a getting back into me and like my hobbies and yes i'm a mother alhamdulillah i'm a wife you know i'm a teacher but i'm also me and um so yeah so i'm, I'm hoping i can share those types of things with you um i might be doing like a prayer outfit sewing tutorial as well with some tie-dye fabric that i have so that might be kind of fun so yeah, so look out for those videos if you enjoy sewing and clothing and knitting and crocheting. And the next video I think is going to be a knitting and crocheting podcast. So I will see you guys then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye guys.